Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome back for part three of our Hartree Flock program coding. Um, today we're going to be coding the electron nuclear attraction integral. If you're new to this channel or if you're just stopping by, please subscribe to my channel. I have a lot of videos coming out and I want you to get them first and, um, you know, follow along and we'll get to know each other and we'll do, we'll, we'll be doing great things. So, uh, in previous videos, we coded the overlap integral and the kinetic energy integral for our hartree fock program. We decided to go ahead and do the program for um, only involving s orbitals for now. So later, after we do the entire program, we, we will come back and do it for p orbitals. But um, the consensus was that people just wanted to see how the SCF cycle worked and how this all sort of uh, came together. So we can definitely do that for s orbitals and then come back and do it for p orbitals later. So uh, one thing we'll need if we're going to be doing the electron nuclear attraction integral is we'll need to import the special function from SciPy. Um, also, I am using um, oh from from SciPy. We're also going to be um, I'm, I'm going to post a link in the description of the derivations I followed. Basically, there's if you just Google electron nuclear attraction integral, you'll get an article from Mathematica, something of that sort. Uh, it's basically all right there. Uh, the question is then, how do you put that into code? And so if you go through that and you read it, you'll see that most of the math is actually for these angular momentum terms. If you set them to zero, uh, you'll get a much simpler result. So I encourage you to go through that. Um, so let's go ahead and make a, uh, a new cell, and we're going to call it um, electron nuclear attraction and it's going to take our molecule and it's also going to take um, I'll call atom coordinates and Z now if you've been following along uh, one could get the atom coordinates from the primitive Gaussian class uh, that's one way but we're actually going to just give them here as well and so like I've been saying this whole time this code is not meant to be, you know, a lean machine. It's not meant to be, you know, fully optimized and working really fast. It's just purely for instructional purposes. So if you're an experienced hartree fock electronic structure theory coder out there and you come across here, um, you'll probably shudder with disgust at how we do this video. But, um, you know, this is how I'm going to do it because my goal is to educate people and show them how this is done and not to necessarily uh, code it for performance or, uh, you know, uh, simplicity, like in terms of like uh, not being redundant. So the code is going to be redundant in a lot of places. Um, it's just for instructional purposes only. So here's our electron nuclear attraction integral. It's gonna take molecule, which is a list of basis functions, which themselves, which themselves are a list of primitive Gaussian class members. It's gonna take atom coordinates. It's gonna take Z values, which are the atomic numbers so what we do actually, a lot of this integral uses uh, stuff from the kinetic energy integral. So let's go ahead and copy that here. Okay, very nice. Um, now what we're going to have to do is define something called n atoms. And that's our number of atoms. And that's going to be the length of z. Could also just be the length of atom coordinates. Anywhere you have a t in here, let's make it vne for uh, nuclear electron attraction. Uh, let's go ahead and delete these. Delete this as well. That is now VNE, and this is now VNE. Okay, um, some things I know we won't need is we will not need uh, these down here. We will need this PG, except for this PG will no longer be between uh, the coordinates on, a on every primitive Gaussian, it'll actually only be on the atoms. And so I know what you're saying, aren't these also on the atom as well? It is, but um, you need to do the whole thing for one atom at a time. So uh, so what we actually need this to do, we need to change this to be um, atom coordinates atom. And so there is no index atom that we're looping over, so we need to loop over atoms. So uh, I'll do for atom in range n atoms. By the way, this I could be making uh, small errors along the way, so we'll have to debug at some point. So I'm going to have to indent everything by four here. So 
So just please be patient with me while we do this. Yes. Uh, then we're going to need to take the uh, absolute value squared of this. That can be done by doing the dot product. So numpy dot pg pg. Let's go ahead and save. Um, this s thing, we can get rid of most of this. We're going to need to keep this part here for sure. Uh, in front of all this, though, we're going to need minus z atom. That's the atomic charge on, or that's the, uh, the z value of the atom. So uh, sort of atomic number. Um, we're also going to need, uh, now if you follow the derivations, we get this term here. It's going to just be uh, 2 times pi over p. Okay, very good. And then uh, all we need after this is just something called the boys function. The boys function takes as arguments two things. Uh, one of them is going to be p times this pg2. And then um, the other one, we're just going to have a zero. So this is actually based on the angular momentum value, um, and it's zero here because uh, we're only doing s orbitals. Uh, at a later time, this will not definitely not be zero. This will be uh, uh, like one, two, you know, something like that. Some some angular momentum term. Um, so now let's define the Boyce function. This takes x and um, I'll say just n here. Okay, so. Um, which we have is zero. So if x equals zero, because the Boyce function is not defined at zero, so you have to do some procedure where you like Taylor expand at zero, uh, and here we just keep the first term. So we're going to return one over two times n plus one. So that's that's if x equals zero. Else uh, we are going to return, and now this is where you need a special function. So we have this first thing here, okay? And it's just like this. This is just basically from the derivations, okay? Uh, and then there's this other gamma function, which is uh, probably the gamma function everybody is more uh, in tune with. And then it's times this sort of prefactor. It's going to be two times x raised to the n plus one half. And I'm just checking these uh, parentheses to make sure this works fine. So uh, pretty much that is it. Um, how you realize to get here is through much struggle going through the derivation, uh, but pretty much this is this is just it. Um, now what we have to do is basically be able to call this function. So we're going to call this function from down here. And again, this could be littered with uh, small errors. So for now, let's just assume it's right. This S can actually just go. We don't need that. OK, so now we're down here. And we're going to print electron nuclear attraction uh, matrix and we're going to call this function. So that means we need to now define, uh, I'm going to go ahead and make this capital Z. We need to define a uh, atom coordinates. Well first let's define Z. That's just two hydrogen, right? So that's just one one. Then we need atom coordinates. Uh, so our first atom coordinates is just basically at the origin, that's just first hydrogen. And then the second one is displaced in the x dimension by the equilibrium bond length of H2. So those are our atom coordinates right there. Uh, what we have to do is actually typecast these. Uh, we have to typecast these as NumPy arrays. So we'll do that. Okay, uh, I have no idea if this is going to work, so I'm going to throw up a exit, and uh, let's go ahead and see if this works. So uh, 
we should be getting a value of 1.19, negative 1.19 on the off diagonal, and uh, negative 1.88 on the diagonal for this basis. So let's go ahead and sell run all. Check out our errors. Oh, it actually just uh, worked. It actually worked perfectly. So yeah, that's literally it. That's the electron nuclear attraction matrix for the s orbitals. Very, very sort of simple uh, if you just have s orbitals. If you don't have s orbitals, uh, as you can, you'll see from the Mathematica derivation, a lot of terms don't cancel. So basically, um, uh, when you set L, like all of those angular momentum terms to zero, the derivations are much, much, a, a lot of terms cancel, and you just get left with this sort of simple expression. But when you have angular momentum, like a p orbital, a d orbital, uh, it, 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 there's a lot of terms that do not cancel, and it's much more complicated. Um, but, but this actually works here. Um, so let's go ahead and do it for our 631g basis. Um, what we'll need to do is copy atom coordinates and molecule, or not atom coordinates, uh, Z and atom coordinates. Okay, so let's go ahead and press run. So yeah, basically there, there you go. Um, that's basically it. Uh, now, what we could do is set this up for water. Um, but I think we're gonna, uh, we'll wait till all the way when we get to p orbitals to do that. Like I, I could do a, a simulation eventually for a water molecule with all s orbitals. So like no oxygen p orbitals. But that is a little strange, uh, but, it, but it should be doable. We can also do um, helium hydrogen. Uh, could also, I think, maybe even get away with lithium. Um, but yeah, this is how you, this is our next piece of the puzzle, this electron nuclear attraction uh, term. Uh, in the next video, we'll do the electron electron repulsion matrix. Um, and then when we're done with that, we're going to do the self consistent field cycle. Um, oh, yeah, we also have to do the nuclear nuclear repulsion. Um, so, next video, we're going to do the electron electron attraction. Then we're going to do the, um, or it's the electron electron repulsion, sorry. Then we're going to do the nuclear nuclear repulsion. Then we'll do the SCF cycle. And um, then I think we're, what we're going to do is once the SCF cycle is working, we're going to make potential energy surface scans. Um, and then maybe at the very end, we could do post Hartree Fock, we do some MP, MP2 uh, corrections. So add in a little correlation. Um, correlation effects and then we're going to basically come back and we're going to go through each function and uh, add the angular momentum terms so uh, yeah so this is the overlap matrix STO3G basis this is the kinetic energy matrix STO3G basis this is the electron nuclear attraction uh, sort of matrix uh, this right here is what we needed to do the integral. So this is the basically integral of the basis functions, uh, uh, which are themselves comprised of uh, primitive Gaussian class members. So, okay, everyone, I'll see you next time. Take care.